Hello, book lovers! We have come to the end of A Christmas Carol. Um, as you can probably guess, stave five or chapter five is called The End of It, which is the end of the story. Uh, so thank you for hanging in there. You've been doing a really great job of following along with the story. So stave five or chapter five begins with um, Scrooge realizing that he really is back in his own room. So his bed is his bed, the room is his own, and he vows as soon as he is awake, he says, I am going to live in the past and the present and the future. And I'm going to think about all of these things that have happened to me and I'm going to change my life based on these things that have happened. So he was obviously pretty emotional at this point. Um, he'd had a hard night. He learned a lot of things and he saw a lot of things that he probably didn't want to see. Um, but he realizes suddenly that he's back. You know, the things that he saw in the future have not happened yet. He still has time to fix them. So he's so excited and flustered. He's trying to put his clothes on and he's like ripping them and putting them on inside out and he's fighting with his socks and he just can't seem to get dressed because he's so excited. So finally, he manages to get his clothes on and he realizes that he doesn't know what day it is. He's not sure how many days have passed because he sort of lost his sense of time. Um, he doesn't know if it was three nights, three months, three years, who knows. So he runs to the window and he opens the window and sees a boy in the street. And he calls down and he says, hello, what day is it? And the boy is like, how does this guy know, not know what day it is? Maybe he's a little crazy. But he replies, he says, today is Christmas. And Scrooge realizes that he did not miss Christmas. Everything that happened to him happened in one night, and he is now able to experience this Christmas. He did not miss it. Um, <clears throat> so he says to the boy, he says, oh good, okay, I didn't miss it. Now, I want you, boy, to go to the poulterer. Poulterer is where they sell poultry. Poultry means chicken, turkey, geese, basically birds that people eat, okay? Um, he says, remember that really big turkey that's hanging in the window? Go buy that. And if you do it fast enough, I'll give you some money. So the boy runs off, and Scrooge decides uh, that he is going to send this big turkey to Bob Cratchit, his clerk. So he writes out the card, um, he's, and his hands are shaking because he's still very emotional. Um, he writes Bob Cratchit's address on the card. And he really thinks about, while he's doing this, like the reaction that Bob and his family are probably going to have. And he's really enjoying um, imagining that scene. So they come and they bring the turkey to Bob Cratchit's and then Scrooge decides that he's going to go out into the street. And people are walking around and for the first time in a really long time, people are saying things to Scrooge. Remember at the beginning of the story, Nobody asked him for the time of day. Nobody said hello. But now, suddenly, people are saying, good morning, Merry Christmas, because Scrooge is smiling, smiling, something he hasn't done in a long time. And as he's walking, he finds the man who came to his business um, in the very first chapter and asked him to give money for charity. And he thinks, okay, I can probably guess how this guy is going to respond to me. He's probably not going to be very happy to see me. So before the man could say anything, um, Scrooge walked up to him and said, I have to say something to you. And he whispered in his ear. And Dickens doesn't tell us exactly how much money Scrooge pledged to this charity, decided to give to this charity. But it must have been a lot um, because it, it took the man's breath away. And he asked if Scrooge was serious. And Scrooge said, you know what? Yes, um, 
I'm not just paying for this year, but I'm paying for all of the years that I didn't give you anything. Um, and the man is very pleased. He's very thankful. Um, and he promises that he will come around to Scrooge's business more often. And then Scrooge continues walking, and he decides to go to his nephew, Fred's house. And remember that Fred invited him to dinner at the beginning of the story, um, and Scrooge said no, as he has done many times before. But this time he decided to go. And he walked into the house, and when he walked in, Fred was obviously very surprised, and so was Fred's wife. Um, but he was so pleased, and I think that's the cool thing about Fred, is he, nev he didn't waste any time being angry about all the times Scrooge didn't come. He was just really happy that he finally did. So <clears throat> they had a very good time, they played games, they had a wonderful holiday, and <clears throat> sorry, I have a cold. The next day, Scrooge decided to go to work very early because he wanted to catch Bob Cratchit coming in late. And this seems surprising. It kind of makes you think, well, maybe he's going back to his old ways. But he waits and he waits and he waits. And Bob is 18 and a half minutes late showing up to work, which, of course, would probably have driven Scrooge nuts before. But Scrooge wants to, like play around with him a little bit. So he walks into his office and he seems very grumpy. He's like, what do you mean coming in late? Why are you late? And Bob, of course, is afraid. He's like, I'm sorry, sir. It will never, it's only once a year. I, I partied too much yesterday. And Scrooge in response says, I'm not going to stand this anymore. I'm not going to take this anymore. And I am going to raise your salary, give you more money. And Bob looks at Scrooge and thinks he's gone crazy and he actually considers calling the court to come and take him away but Scrooge looks so happy and earnest like honest in his reaction that Bob realizes that he's being serious and he sends Bob out to buy more wood and coal for the fire to make a bigger fire so Bob doesn't have to be cold anymore and it ends with this lovely paragraph about how Scrooge changed permanently going forward. Um, he did all the things that he promised. He gave money to charity. He um, spent more time with his family. He was much better to his employees. And he became a second father to Tiny Tim, uh, Bob Cratchit's son, who was disabled. And Tiny Tim did not die. And in fact, Scrooge became as good a man as the city had ever known. So he really did a complete 180. He turned around and became a completely different person. Um, and it says he didn't have to, no more dealings with the spirits. They never had to come back and talk to him again. Um, but it, it was said that he kept Christmas all year long. And uh, Dickens makes a wish for those of us who are reading the story, he wishes that the same can be said for all of us. Um, and so he ends it with a blessing, he says, and so as Tiny Tim observed, God bless us, everyone. So I hope you enjoyed this story. I know that it was difficult, but it's really a lovely message um, about being conscious of the way that we treat other people um, and being sure that we aren't just nice one day out of the year, um, but that we try to continue that throughout the year, and that we really think about things that are important. And I think Dickens is really pointing out here, well, money, money is not the important thing. The important thing is your family and your relationships and the way that you treat people. So, um, <clears throat> you know, if you want to think a little bit about how you can keep Christmas in your heart, uh, even though you may not celebrate Christmas. Um, a lot of people around the world don't celebrate Christmas, but he's not really meaning Christmas, right? He's meaning that feeling of goodwill, that feeling of cheer, that feeling of charity, and that desire to be nice and kind to others. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, this week we will be reading the end of the book, and you'll hear the ending. Um, and then next week, 
we have one more week left of book club, we will start watching the movie together, uh, the animated version of the movie, which is really, really great, and I think you'll like it, and hopefully it will um, be another way for you to understand the story. So thanks for listening, and I will see you on December 8th or 9th or 10th for the last official meeting of the book club um, before we watch the movie, and then on the last week have some pizza. Thanks, guys.